Good day, Delaware National Guard, and welcome to the April 2015 edition of the DNG News. Coming up in this month's edition, troops arrive and depart, retirements, the Kirkwood Award, and the Best Warrior Competition. As we have gotten used to since 9-11, we once again welcomed home and bid farewell to soldiers and airmen. Soldiers from Detachment 7, Operations Support Airlift Agency, are heading to the Horn of Africa to support Joint United States African Command by transporting personnel and supplies to remote locations throughout the country. The Air National Guard welcomed home 20 members of the 142nd Aeromedical Evacuation Squadron from Southwest Asia. Nurses, medical technicians, and group support personnel operate throughout the Aeromedical Evacuation System to bring home America's wounded troops aboard various aircrafts. The wing also welcomed home the 166th Civil Engineer Squadron. The final group of 30 airmen returned home, also from Southwest Asia, where they performed skilled trades work at air base facilities to support contingency operations. Welcome home to our Air Guard and good luck, Detachment 7. While winter is retiring into spring, the Guard saw some retirements of their own. Major General Tom Thomas retired from the Air National Guard after 34 years of service. While Thomas held many positions, his most notable is spearheading the development of Delaware's Cyber Force. The Army National Guard also lost a two-star, Major General Louis Guernsey. He retired after 30 years of faithful service. Guernsey's most recent position was that of Deputy Surgeon General, National Guard Affairs. Thank you both for your dedication to the organization and congratulations on your retirements. Meanwhile, the Newcastle Air National Guard Base is stepping up to serve as an auxiliary location for dignified transfers of fallen servicemen. Dover Air Force Base is repairing a runway this year and may need to use our base to handle this delicate and somber mission. A team from Dover was here this month to do a training run. Nate has the story. That's right, Wendy. Dover Air Force Base's Mortuary Affairs Operations handles all dignified transfers from overseas. The remains of fallen servicemen are brought in on C-17s, but runway repairs at Dover may require the team to land here in Newcastle. To ensure that families and the fallen receive the same dignity and respect whatever the location, mortuary affairs teams performed a dry run in March. From landing a C-17 to bringing in a simulated family, the exercise captured the entire operation. The rehearsal ensures that if a dignified transfer must occur at the Newcastle Air National Guard base, both units are prepared to handle the mission. The newest member of our DNG News team, Staff Sergeant John Michaels, sat down with General Vavila to talk about the benefits of joining the Guard. Sir, what are the key benefits of someone wanting to join the National Guard today? I'm glad you asked me that question, Sergeant Michaels. I think there's a variety of benefits to membership in our National Guard today. Uh, foremost among them are, is the sense of service, service the country and service the state. As a u unique force, we're the only service component in our United States military that serves both the needs of our nation and our state. Now, in addition to that, there's a numerous, there are numerous benefits associated with service in our National Guard. Uh, educational benefit. You've got TRICARE uh, health and dental benefits. Uh, in addition to that, there's a wide variety of other things. When you travel, you can stay at military installations. You've got some uh, MWR locations. Uh, that's morale, welfare, and recreation locations at, at Disney World in, in Florida. And on, the, on Waikiki Beach in, in Hawaii, and also in Germany, uh, plus air travel, Space A, uh, family vacations at Bethany Beach and the like. Uh, I, I, it just, the list goes on and on and on. There are tremendous benefits to being a member of our National Guard of the United States, and particularly our Delaware National Guard. Sir, will there continue to be career paths for those wanting to come off of active duty to join the Guard? I believe that there will be and will continue to be uh, opportunities in, in our National Guard to absorb members of our active component that want to come in to our organization, as, as has occurred in the past. And I think it's going to be probably more pronounced as we move forward, as because of economies and budget constraints, we're going to see 
some of the active component formations reduced, both in the Army and the Air Force. And there are opportunities in our organization. I mean, why would we not want to take trained personnel that uh, served on active duty and plug them into our formations? It makes good sense for us and certainly good sense for our country. Thank you, sir. Before we get to Officer Candidate McDougall with the weather, take a look at the creativity of your fellow guardsmen. This new handy dandy, two-handed, easy shovel shovel. It's made just for you, tall, short, it does not matter. Shovel your driveway, your sidewalks in no time flat. You got it all. It's the crutch. <laughs> Look at that. It's light. It's just, it is, it's very durable. But the beauty of it is, at any, you can adjust it to fit your needs. The height. Look at it. It's an adjustable level. You can do that. You can do it right here. If you're a tall guy, like Sergeant Benson is, if you're a short guy like me, it has it all. And it's, it's so light. The snow just flows in the air. Look, watch it go. Boom. It's nothing. Your back isn't hurt. You're not over here like this. What you know? Do away with your, your typical shovel. <laughs> Get the crotch. Get the crotch. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what the real weather will bring this month, but one thing you can be sure of is 100% chance of responses to the military ball. Mark your calendars for this year's ball, May 16th. It is sure to be the best one ever. It will once again be held at the Dover Downs Hotel and Casino. Reservations are due by Monday, May 4th. We can't wait to see you there. Speaking of great times, Staff Sergeant Nathan Bright spent his drill weekend shadowing the soldiers competing in the best warrior competition. Take a look at Nate's story. While most of us would probably still be driving into drill, six soldiers had already been up, taken a PT test in one degree weather, and were now busy being tested again. And they would be tested again, and again, and again, testing the limits, as well as the skills and knowledge of soldiers, is the point of the best warrior competition. Over three days at Fort Indiantown Gap, soldiers must show their competency at basic soldier skills like weapons and first aid, as well as their ability to shoot, move, and communicate. The competition included M16 rifle and M9 pistol marksmanship, a land navigation course, All right. See you guys later. Mm -hmm. And finished off with a ruck march. In between, they had to show off their combative skills and perhaps most stressful, sitting before a panel of sergeants major. The hardest part was the board. Uh, it's always nerve wracking to go in front of so many distinguished uh, non-commissioned officers, uh, especially the highest ranking non-commissioned officers in the state of Delaware. Uh, you always want to put on a good face and you never fully feel prepared. The NCO and lower enlisted soldiers named winners will move on to the regional competition later this year. Congratulations to the winners of the competition, Sergeant Julian Skinner and Specialist Hunter Exline Star. Not only did the Army name the top soldier and NCO of the year, they also recognized their top commander. Congratulations to Captain Trib Singh, Joint Force Headquarters Commander, for receiving the Captain Robert Kirkwood Award. While the award recognizes an, an individual, that individual has to be part of a great unit, and that he is. Thanks, Nate. Well, that's all we have for this month. Don't forget to RSVP for the Military Ball on May 16th.